let's look at what model output looks like. Model output, there's two things that I need to come up with this concept, economic capital. And I hope that I've articulated the importance of that number. But the first thing is I need to have your risk tolerance, and I also need your risk profile. So these models, these simulation-based models, give me your risk profile. So in this case, the company has an expected income that's positive. Okay, it's to the side of zero income. I need to hold capital, if you will, to afford the complete downside up until I simply tolerate the risk. Okay, so this is a firm that's willing to manage itself at a 2% chance of insolvency. Now, I can gain this, if you will. I can increase my risk tolerance, and in so doing, I can eliminate my need for required economic capital. And I can increase my risk tolerance even more so and in so doing, eliminate my need for economic capital. So recognize that economic capital is a function of that risk profile that comes from these simulation-based models, but it also requires knowing what your risk tolerance is. So when I hear that a firm has excess capital, I typically say, but what's their risk tolerance? Because I can make that number anything that I want it to be. What if I have a situation where my required economic capital is more than my actual? I need more than I have. Only then do you have a paradigm upon which you can exit businesses or hedge. Okay. I, I have to come up with economic capital. I need more than I actually have. So in order to create that alignment, I will create value either by exiting businesses or hedging. How does that look? Basically, I take the distribution that I had once before, and now because I have hedged it and or exited businesses, I now have the blue distribution, okay? So net of my strategic choices, I have narrowed the range around the expected. Keep my risk tolerance in place. You can see now on a net basis, I have a need for less economic capital. And hopefully at this point, I have an alignment with the capital that I actually have on my balance sheet. Okay, now this hedging did something. It reduced volatility. I gave up some of the upside. But in return, I also gave up some of the expected. You know, we can arbitrage the market sometimes, but that's not sustainable. So typically, when you're in a hedging paradigm, you are giving up some expected. But the question is, was it worth it? Well, what you have done is, in exchange for this decision, you have some downside protection. And as a result of that, you have freed up the need for economic capital. You have created, in essence, sustainability in your business plan, because you have the capital now properly aligned with your actual capital. And you have a platform by which you can deliver on your business plan and in hopes to generate sustainable earnings.